Get to know the geography of your fingerboard every day. Remain sensitive, as if it's your first time playing these notes. I thought that today we could talk about the four steps to precise shifting. While shifts can look different, they all have two things in common. They get us from place to place, while at least one finger remains in contact with the string. The thumb can lead, a finger can lead, but now that everyone uses some form of a shoulder rest, nearly every shift will look like this. The whole structure moves, and I mean the whole structure, no need to bend the wrist or isolate the elbow. Even the smallest shift should engage the back and the shoulder. And here are the four steps. Number one, the release. Releasing the finger from the fingerboard is the most important part of the shift. Think of air hockey. It feels like the puck defies gravity because there is close to zero friction. But with the air turned off, the lightning speed is gone. Imagine your finger pressing while you're trying to move fast. Not only will friction hold you back, but on different days, different humidity levels will change the friction and the same shift will feel very different. How much to release? Well, just enough for the string to no longer be touching the fingerboard. Release before the shift and initiate contact with the fingerboard only once you have arrived. Remember that your finger should maintain contact with the string even when it's off the fingerboard. Hmm. Do you release the bow? No, don't release the bow. It may feel strange at first as the two hands want to synchronize, but you'll quickly learn how to make them independent. When the shifts eventually get fast enough, you won't hear a gap in the sound. Practice the release in every shift. It'll feel annoying at first, but it quickly becomes natural and smooth. Just a quick note here. Notice how I'm not mentioning slides? Well, if we don't release the finger, we'll get a slide. Nothing wrong with a slide, but technically and aesthetically, shifts and slides are different altogether. We use one for transportation and the other for expression. And contrary to what many students think, the two of them are not interchangeable. To some people, every shift is a slide, but that's because sliding requires a lot less practice time. Extra sliding is just a lazy technique pretending to be expressive interpretation. Second step, the note before. It's impossible for the human brain to maintain intense focus for too long, but we're very good at igniting bursts of concentration. Because it's too late to focus after you've started the shift, you can gather your concentration by listening to the very end of the note before each shift. By finding inner peace on the note before, you'll focus much better on actually listening. You'll allow for your natural skill to take over, and shifts will just happen. Our third step is the guide note. Every shift that involves two or more fingers needs a guide note. Every shift. In simple cases, we can get away with skipping the guide note, but as the shifts get longer, the risk is greater. Sure, you'll get them sometimes, but our industry needs consistency. What's the guide note to this simple shift? What about this one? Or this one? Unlike with some slides, guide notes for shifts generally involve the old finger, the old bow, and the old string. I'm linking to a series of shifting exercises here. The first two levels will help you get the formula for finding the guide notes. Then you can apply it to any of your shifts. By the way, guide notes are only for you to hear and just in the practice room. Please don't perform them. And lastly, avoid cheating. You know what I mean by that. It's where you slow down the bow to make sure you're in the correct neighborhood and only then continue making music. Since you'll be practicing the hard shifts either way, you might as well do it correctly from the start. Keep it in time and maintain your beautiful sound. Because of cheating, shifts are considered to be one of the five phrase destroyers. In high school, I used to be afraid of the really long shifts. Part of the reason was visual perspective, but they were still a shot in the dark for me. A teacher once asked me to just practice long shifts for two minutes a day, any long shifts. In the first week, I lost the fear. In the second week, with the fear gone, I started to aim for bullseye. In the third week, I was getting them all. Then I started to actually enjoy them. In just a month, long shifts turned from scary to fun. I believe that any violin technique could become enjoyable as long as you isolate it from the scary context of a piece and you perfect it in a controlled setting. In one page of a piece, you may have 15 difficult shifts. 
but in a shifting exercise you'll get many more in less time. There are many standard shifting exercises out there. Bios, Shevchik, Dunes. I'm linking to mine as well. They're particularly challenging at the higher levels and they're just two minutes long. By practicing a piece, you'll get good at the piece. By practicing technique, you'll get good at the violin. Luckily, you don't have to choose one or the other. The exercises are just so short. Get to know the geography of your fingerboard every day. Remain sensitive, as if it's your first time playing these notes. That's the only way to real mastery.